The following is distributed by the Berean Call. Being able to share this material with you is a gift and part of the fulfillment of my life's purpose. Oprah Winfrey said on Wednesday, January 30th, 2008, as she revealed the 61st Oprah's Book Club selection, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. She added, it was an awakening for me that I want for you, too. For the first time ever, readers around the world will be able to participate in a free, live, interactive classroom discussion led by Winfrey and Tolley. Each weekly class, ten altogether, will correspond to a chapter from A New Earth, with a discussion focusing on the chapter's themes. Published in 2005, A New Earth encourages a collective sense of commitment to changing the way we live for people who want to make a difference. With the knowledge that we live in a time desperate for global change, the book by renowned spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle answers the question, what can one person do to enact that change? With clarity and in practical terms, he gently leads readers to a new level of consciousness, awakening them to their lives' purposes and inviting them to envision a new earth, where peace and fellowship are the norm. Dave, uh, here we have Oprah Winfrey involved in uh, the promotion of a book. When she, you know, she called in an awakening for me that I want for you too, and the people responded. The book sold uh, about three and a half million copies right away. It's right at the top of the of the list in places like Walmart, um, Target, and so on. So, it's amazing the influence that uh, this woman has. Now, what about Eckhart Tolle? Well, he's German. He has a, a, a philosopher, but really he's a New Ager. Uh, his philosophy is a Hinduism, a little Buddhism, and uh, you know, positive mental attitude kinds of stuff. But I want to go through and have you respond to some of the things that, that are being said about this book. Again, it calls him a renowned spiritual teacher. And uh, he answers questions that we supposedly he's gently leading readers to a new level of consciousness. Let's start with that, Dave. Is that possible? Well, Tom, we've uh, heard this sort of thing in the New Age movement. We heard it from the druggies. This was a consciousness revolution. Right. Altered states of consciousness, higher states of consciousness. How do you define that? I can tell you that no psychologist, no scientist, no neurologist can define states of consciousness, a new level of consciousness. What does that mean? Doesn't mean anything, Tom. What it means is, oh, we have a clear perception of something, or we're, or we're more concerned about the earth or whatever. It's not a level of consciousness, but anyway, they want to call it that. Uh, but that's really a spurious uh, description, a level of consciousness that cannot be defined mm -hmm. by any neurologist mm -hmm. or psychologist. Well, Dave, we've heard this from Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, right. from Muktananda, Rajneesh, from all of these. Right, right. Of course, those would be Hindu gurus. Now we have a German who's into their philosophies, but he's... Uh, sort of massaging it around so that it's more uh, acceptable, more attractive to the Western mentality. Right, right. But a new consciousness is, oh, wait a minute. Boy, my, my, my level of consciousness now is not working, Dave. So now I'm going to get a more informed um, and I'm going to be better enabled to uh, perform and do the things that I need to do at this new level of consciousness. Well, we've heard that over and over and over again, yet it didn't work for any of these gurus. Well, the drug movement was a consciousness revolution. Mm -hmm. They talked about altered states of consciousness, ASC, but we've discussed that before, scientifically. Altered state under drugs or meditation, that loosens the normal connection between you and your brain, allows another spirit to interpose itself. 
take off the neurons in the brain, create a universe of illusion. That's where the psychedelic adventures come from and so forth. So it's a delusion. Now, if you're right. How did it work out, Dave, for these guys, Timothy Leary and, and so on? What did it prove? What value was in it? Well, it destroyed their lives, if you want to say that. It well, it did. Absolutely. Now, look what he's offering here. He's going to awaken us to life's purpose. He's go this is going to give us a, a vision, envision a new earth where peace and fellowship are the norm. This is pie in the sky but through, Tom, through uh, grand delusion, I think. Tom, if, we've ta if we're talking about our life's purpose, that's a rational concept. It's not a state of consciousness, whatever that may mean. This is something that I've got to understand. I've got to think about it. Uh, but consciousness, state of consciousness, no. Well, Dave, let's pull it back to what uh, Eckhart Tolle is about. He is a Buddhist, a Hindu. He doesn't believe in a creator God. Right. So how can you have purpose? How can you have peace and fellowship when you don't have a creator God who created man in his own image? That we would have purpose and meaning and those things. Tom, he's just throwing, uh, he's throwing him out. Yeah, Tom, I, I'm sorry, but this is just the same old thing recycled. I wonder why, why is uh, Oprah jumping on this? She just had the secret. I mean, that would give you anything you wanted. You could be in it, whatever you wanted to be. I, I mean, wh how could this be any better? Why has this become such a revelation for her? Yeah. Because well, we go from one thing to another. And we know this is all part of the same package. Right. For more information about the Berean Call and a free subscription to our monthly newsletter, call us at 800-937-6638 or visit our website at www.thebereancall.org.